What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Empowered Athlete Podcast. It's your host, Natty Boss. And today I have a special guest, Miss Amanda Matar. I said that correctly? Yes, you did. Yes. And this is a really interesting conversation that we're going to have today because we're going to really bridge two worlds of jujitsu and um, this holistic path of being a doula. And she initially reached out to me on Instagram and wanted to share her story of how jujitsu she believes made her a better doula. And I thought that was such an interesting and unique perspective that I absolutely wanted to have on the show. In addition to sneaking up on her and reading all of her stuff and seeing that she's really big into our same philosophies of the holistic lifestyle and everything that she does. So everything is in alignment. And so I'm excited to share her perspective and her energy with you all. Um, so a little bit about Miss Amanda. She was born and raised in Orlando, Florida. Her parents were refugees from a civil war in Lebanon, and she's an Arab American. And one thing I really loved about the bio she sent me was just a little bit of her parental influence. And so it's really unique when your parents can teach you about love and peace and living with gratitude and humility and you know being refugees i'm sure that what played a huge part of them instilling that in you and i just think that's really interesting because i talk so much about trauma and how some of us or most of us don't really have you know the luxury sometimes of having that secure type of upbringing and so it's really cool to see that there are people out there that do that and that makes me feel really really good so i'm so glad you had that experience in your life and yeah. other benefits um or what she has to offer is that she holds a bachelor degree in psychology from the University of Central Florida, and she's collected other certificates with yoga, Hatha yoga, and swing yoga, which is really interesting. She's also trained in reformer Pilates, and she's really big into just practicing mindfulness exercises, which, you know, is a huge topic that we talk on the podcast about things like yoga, meditation, just spending time in nature with her daughters. And of course, training jujitsu. She's a humble two-stripe white belt. Um, but she's in our world. And she's also, as I said, a mother, um, a sister, wife, and business owner. And her business is Holy Women Wellness. And this business serves to advocate for women to tap into their true warrior spirit to find true peace. And I know that you had mentioned that peace is almost like a core value for you, which I really, really admire. Um, so I am so excited to have you on the show and thank you so much for, I, I'm sorry. And she actually currently lives in Saudi Arabia, right? Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, yeah, yeah. Abu Dhabi. So she's born and raised in Florida, lives in Abu Dhabi, and she's currently visiting from New York. So lots yes. of influences. Um, so yeah. thank you again for being here. Welcome to the show and let's get it. Let's dive into it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much Nat, for having me on your show, um, for connecting with me to reply. You know, it's just, it's so special what social media can bring about like you know sometimes there's a lot of negative connotation with social media but actually it's on the contrary there's so many opportunities to connect with like-minded individuals and be inspired and grow and I think some of the things that you say is like um, to unlearn to relearn so unlearning that social media is bad and relearning that it is actually really great because we can connect and learn so many really valuable and important life lessons and um, that's one of the core values of Holy Women Wellness. Also, another kind of side brand that I have is called Yogi Lifestyle, which is trying to advocate that essential life skills like yoga and jujitsu are so important to live with or learn by because um, it brings about true peace. Yoga is this philosophy of finding inner peace through the eight limbs of yoga. So there's like basically, I like to call them departments of yoga um, for the modern kind of lifestyle to tap into. And then I found jujitsu and I thought, wow, when you put yourself under extreme amounts of uncomfortable situations, you're guiding your brain into getting comfortable 
knowing that you're in a safe space with, you know, your coaches and your classmates, and you have a chance to actually think, how can I get out of this problem? You think of solutions. And um, so essential life skills like yoga, um, jujitsu, mindfulness. It was one day. So just to give a little background story of my jujitsu journey, because this is something huge that, you know, you're into and you're a black belt. And I feel so like excited to be on the show with you. I'm so humbled. Um, well, technically I, a black belt is a white belt again. So, oh, wow. We're no, blushing. It made me blush. <laughs> so as a, as a white belt, um, I got introduced to jujitsu from one of my students. I was teaching swing yoga in Abu Dhabi in a really beautiful uh, yoga studio. And my classes were great. They were so much fun. The ladies were really enjoying it. And I had this one woman come into my class and I looked at her and I said, I know her from somewhere and I couldn't remember where it was. And it was probably a few years back that I was doing Muay Thai at a gym in Abu Dhabi. And it occurred to me when she was in my class, I was like, I know her, she's that, that badass who was training Muay Thai in, in that gym. So we're doing a move on the swing and I looked at her, I'm like, I know you. I remember where it was, it was Muay Thai. And she just started laughing and blushing. She's like, uh. And then it was like a couple of weeks later, she came back to class. Uh, I mean, she had been coming uh, frequently, but she was covered in bruises. And I was like, what, dear, what's, what happened? What, why are you covered in bruises? Like pole dancing, maybe? Like, I didn't want to assume that she got beat up, but I was like, maybe it's pole dancing. She's like, oh no, no, it's um, jujitsu. I'm like, what? I couldn't even understand the word that she said. I was like, well, what is that? And then she's like, jujitsu is like a martial art. I was like, oh, cool. I used to do Taekwondo as a kid. She's like, no, 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 no. This is not Taekwondo. <laughs> I was like, well, what is it? She's like, and her eyes just lit up. Like there was just this excitement of just me saying, well, what is that? And I could see the, the passion. She's like, I have a gi. I was like, well, what's that? And she's like, don't worry about it. I'll just give you one and you'll just come to my gym. I was like, sweet. So her coach actually had just opened a new dojo in Abu Dhabi. It's called Nest Martial Arts. And she had reached out and she's like, you know what? Actually, my coach wants to like include yoga in the gym. So I was like, sweet. Okay. She's like, just come and like me coach Amadou and um, I'll give you a gi and you can try it out. I fell in love with jujitsu on the first day. Mm -hmm. It must have been like her influence or like her guidance. She was a blue belt at the time and she was so kind and I, I love Jen. I'm going to give her a shout out um, that she really paved the way for me for jujitsu. So I was doing yoga every Saturday at the dojo after our like two hour uh, training session. Some like cool down breathing. At first I was like, I didn't want to enter the dojo with like a yogi kind of mystical like approach. I was like, these people are fighters. Like, yeah. I don't want to come in and be like, okay, everyone close your eyes. And they're still fired up. So I wanted to train jujitsu first and feel what they're feeling and find myself as a better yoga teacher for them. Mm. So I, I felt more confident as a yoga teacher for jujitsu uh, via training jujitsu than incorporating the stretches that I felt benefited my classmates. Yeah, absolutely. And then it was one day Jen and I were training and Coach Amadou was there, it was a small class. It was just her and I at the time. And he was guiding me to get out of her body. As a white belt, I don't know what the hell I was doing. I was just like, well, <laughs> how do I, where do I, I'm dying here. I can't warrior pose out of this. Yeah, there's not, yeah, there's no way I can warrior pose out of this. <laughs> That's hilarious. So he was like, you know, with, you know, move your shoulder, hip escape, you know, take her leg off your, your, um, your waist. And as soon as he was saying that, I just looked at him, I was like, coach, you sound like a doula. He's like, what? He's like, oh my God, you sound like you're helping me birth myself out of this woman's guard. And they just cracked up. They're like, you're, you're nuts. I was like, no, there's, there's something here. I feel it. And it was wow. a moment that I actually teared. I actually cried. It was like a, it was like a happy tour. Like this, like I was like breaking through something. Yeah. And it was nuts. And I, yeah, I just, I just got chills you saying that. Like, it's like a, it's like a coming full circle moment. Yes. Yes. Big time. So then I, I, you know, I was driving in my car, going home and I was like, just reflecting and like playing in my head. What did I just say to coach? Like how, how did I find that he embodied this kind of like 
birth coach, birthing coach, like, but coaches in general help guide people into the right directions. And as a, this is a segue into being a birth coach. So I am a birth coach, I'm a doula. And uh, this work came to me when I birthed my first child in 2012 and my second child in 2014. At the time with my first child, I had no idea what I was doing. There was, I didn't do the work. I didn't hire a coach. I, I just was oblivious. I was actually clueless, but it was like an embodied feeling. Like I knew I wanted to have a natural birth. I knew I didn't want to have medication. I didn't do a home birth or I, I didn't, that wasn't even in my realm. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll go to the hospital and do the traditional, like modern medical uh, birth. But I was very happy and like grateful that it was a natural birth and um, there was no real intervention except the, the extreme push for like Pitocin and like um, the interventions to get women to just hurry up and birth. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of like, there isn't enough like patience or like just give the woman a chance. And I remember I was in labor and um, the anesthesiologist came in. I was, must have been around like eight centimeters. And she was like, are you sure you don't want the, the epidural? I, you could just sign right here. And I was going through a wave of contraction. I was like in my zone, I had headphones on. Like I knew I wanted it natural and I didn't want to be interrupted not knowing that was what I would be doing 10 years later, nine, eight years later for other women. So I was very empowered in that space. Yeah. That no one could like mess with me. I was like, yes. this is my space. Even if there's gonna be people around, I just close my eyes. My sister at the time was pregnant with her first as well. So she was watching me, you know, she was with me. And alhamdulillah, I had a, you know, a natural birth, it was vaginal, but there is some, I know that's probably TMI, but for other women listening out there, you know, um, there is a huge importance on first um, appreciating your own story, uh, respecting all stories and uh, being inclusive that everyone's birth story is special, mm. whether it was um, extremely eventful and like traumatic or it was just like peaceful and empowered. So all these birth stories are important and it's important to share your story with someone you feel safe with just to kind of get it out and, and release it and reflect and learn from it and potentially helping another woman have an empowered, gentle birth. Uh, empowerment. I really appreciate you saying that because one of the things I experienced with my birth was I always knew I wanted to have a natural birth as well. It was something I was really adamant about. And one of the things I had a lot of shame around post-birth was the fact that I couldn't finish. I couldn't finish the process in my home birth where I started. Um, and there was just so much just shame because I was like, I really wanted this. I felt like I failed. Um, and it, that what you said was coming to acceptance with this gets to be our story. You know, this gets to be like the story that was for us and you know, it, really appreciating our journey. And like I said, like to you before we did the, this recording, um, it ended up being in retrospect, what I believe a good call because of the bruising that he had on his head, you know, oh. that could have potentially led to brain damage. If I pushed another 10 hours, you know, you never know what that could happen. So it's like trusting the decisions that you make in that moment and letting that all be a part of your journey. I just think that's so important to really shout out and repeat what you said about like appreciating your journey because I had a lot of a lot of shame those first few weeks after I couldn't get over the fact I was like I can't really say I had a home birth it's like I kind of had a home birth but I, I didn't and like that killed me on the inside because it's all I ever wanted so it's like I, I still kind of laugh and say you know what I did get the one of the aspects, which is why I wanted a home birth was I really wanted to connect to like the primal nature of women and what we've really gone through before conventional medicine made it quote unquote easy and kind of like just get in and out and not really connect to your body and trust your body and the whole process. Believe me, I, I 
I had that process. <laughs> I was able to feel the pain and like be very animalistic and on all fours. And my hair was a mess. And I was like, this is beautiful. And this is painful. And like, this is what creation is. Um, and it gets me emotional thinking about it for whatever reason, but probably because like thinking about my son and what I've created from that. And, and that was the the means necessary for him to come into this world. It's like, it's absolutely incredible. So not to take it, not to take over this conversation, but I I wanted to really highlight what you said there because it's helpful for anyone listening. And it's very helpful for me to get that reminder again of like really owning your story and your, and appreciating your story and journey. There, thank you for sharing that with me and to all your listeners there's so much to dive deeper into pregnancy labor birth postpartum that obviously one one episode um would just be touching surfaces but um what i wanted to say was the the levels of trauma that passes through us during the labor and birth oftentimes gets overlooked. And um, as, a, as a doula, as a birth coach, it's one of the key roles or the, the scope of work is to help guide uh, women into, or couples actually, it's not just women, it's the husband and wife, just couples, you know, I wanna be clear with that is this, that, if you're hiking down a trail, you're going on a trail for the first time in your life and you don't know what's in front of you. <laughs> you have a guide who's gonna tell you who's been there many times before. Like if you go this way, there's gonna be this beautiful tree. If you go this way, there's gonna be some fox that might come out or bears. Like the guide will hopefully with good intention, take you to a direction of um, safety, peace, empowerment gentle versus having it to be like this very intimidating scary unknowns to you what will happen um i understand birth is unpredictable emotions are unpredictable but with preparation um and with acceptance it's a lot more um digestible and 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 with my experience as a birth coach, I've recognized that there are, again, prepar- preparatory steps um, that can help you have this empowered, peaceful, gentle, vaginal birth that your dreams are wishing for. But sometimes there are curveballs in life. Sometimes there could be a story that plays in your head and it takes you somewhere else. It actually, De- derails you from your focal point yeah and it could be just a person that enters the room it could be a thought that enters your space in your head and it, it can derail that's how sensitive we can be in such a vulnerable time and whatever outcome happens it was the divine outcome and I think that's something I love to uh, send appreciation to is that the divine power is there We could do the best that we can to hope for a empowered, gentle birth. But sometimes these um, experiences lead us to be amazing coaches because we, you went through something that might've been traumatic and you're like, okay, now I'm on a mission to teach other women, listen to your body, hear hear it from, hear it from me. I I did this home birth and I was doing this, you know, this, um, this vision, but I got derailed and I'm, I'm okay with it now, but I have emotions I want to process. You too should process yours so you don't feel stuck. Yeah. And like, God bless you. You're like amazing. You have an awesome career. Like, um, what was the word? Um, business. Your business is so freaking inspiring. All the way from Abu Dhabi. Somehow I found you on social media. I was like, who is this person? She's amazing. I, I'm like so inspired by you and all the things that you do for other women. So it's not just about you personally, but it's like you're vibrating energy to all the other women that you touch lives for. And these women also are like center of tensions for their family. Yeah. 
So the feminine energy, this divine feminine experience of pregnancy and birth, um, which for women who wish to have that, I hope you you get what you wish for, you get what you dream for. For those who are, are not interested, that's okay too, <laughs> you know? Um, just like jujitsu, it's not for everybody, but it's for everyone. You know, like it's, it's, yeah. I understand that birth is, you know, something that is very personal. And um, I want to be very, um, I don't want to say the word sensitive, but inclusive for everyone of your listeners. Yeah. It could be a birthing experience of anything, birthing a business, birthing an idea, birthing a jujitsu black belt. I mean, that, that takes a lot of growth. That takes a lot of um, focus and, and precision. But yeah. these days we are very distracted. We have many, many things that distract us from our, our dream. And sometimes it's important to practice mindfulness, to feel centered and to connect with your breath. I know you're, you're embodied uh, breath coach to connect with your smell, your sight, you know, how you feel, what you taste, all these things help us feel refocused even for just a moment in time because our attention is being pulled in every direction oftentimes away from your dream direction so it's important to recognize that bring your awareness to your attention and um coming back down to the feminine birth space how has jiu-jitsu practice for the last two years made me feel more confident to be in the birth space. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear how you bridge those worlds. Cause you'd mentioned like the process of the, the birthing being like gentle and empowering. And as we talked about be. before, um, or at least that might be one of the goals. It's like that also, yes. these are also words that can be described with jujitsu. So um, I'm really excited to hear a little bit about just how your experience in jujitsu has influenced your birth coaching um practice yes number one I felt was I've had really great mentors in my life first I want to put that out I got to give credit to the mentors that are in my life different black belts different birth coaches um different business coaches my yoga teacher trainers all of these even like doctors that I have admired there I'm just like their um their messenger i've just embodied their messages and i want to like spread it the 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 what's the word the bridge from ego to confidence hmm. i just felt more confident when i practiced jujitsu hmm. in addition to the yoga training when i was in when i am in the space of labor and birth with the couple in the hospital sometimes the hospital can kind of melt your confidence away. You kind of get kind of scared in hospitals. You know, it's just one of those things that I have, I have a term for it, like white coat syndrome. You feel like your, your hands are just, your life and hands is in the hands of the doctors and respect to all the doctors and nurses. We need them. They are hard workers. They, you know, also have their own lives that they're trying to process. They come into the hospital to save other lives. There's so many levels of respect for them as well but it takes self responsibility like it takes responsibility of oneself to be like okay this is my journey let me learn what i can learn so that i'm not completely clueless and if i don't know let me hire someone who can guide me like a specific that's why people hire coaches so they can get better in their in their game mm -hmm. so birth there is a game plan for birth there can be, and everyone's birth is different. Some people want it, you know, really private. Some people want it to be a party. Some people want no one to talk. Some people are like, no, I want to hear everyone talking. So like everyone has their own flavor. Everyone has their own, their own story. So find a coach that you resonate with and have that person there to advocate for you at your most vulnerable time and to like, you know, push you through and be like, you got this, you can do it. So as a birth coach, it's our, our duty to make uh, and to guide the women into feeling seen, heard, empowered, no matter where she goes with her, with her energy. 
just kind of flowing with her, making sure that she gets what she wishes for. And the capacity that the birth can go through, yeah. meaning that if, if something changes, you know, you kind of just go with the flow. Don't be so like, so hard, like be, like be soft, which is very important about the pelvic floor space, the, the, the portal, the portal of entrance. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting because with jujitsu, <laughs> the flow of what you're talking about, um, I think because you have that experience with yoga, it probably was easier for you to kind of get to the adaptive space probably because there is movement there. Um, but that's one of the things I think is really important for people to learn in jujitsu is that ability to move with the energy and flow and adapt. I can see that if jujitsu is teaching us that because we have to, right? Because if we don't learn how to flow and adapt to something that's not working, we'll get frustrated, we get hurt. Um, sure. So there's signs telling us that this path, you can't just keep, you know, putting a square peg in a circle hole. You have to adapt, yeah. you have to move, you have to change. And so that's a skill that jujitsu teaches us. And I can see based off your explanation, how that translates to being a doula, because I'm sure that there's, you know, with the, the hormones surging with the women, I know that the, they're <laughs> like changing and, and lots of things like that. And being able to adapt and stay on course um, is definitely very important. I can see how that translates. And so the, the better you get that skill in one area of your life, of course, it can translate to the other area, which is in this case, more of a career. And yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So with, as, as a white belt, there were definitely the, the term uh, like spazzy white belt or like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to roll with the white or blue belts because they're, you know, so like tight and timid or like, you know, there's so much ego. And what I love seeing about black belt athletes is they're so graceful. Like they're so, they're so cool, you know, like there's flow. And obviously that's like the, the dream is to be confident, <laughs> cool, flow and yeah, this, this kind of stuck feeling that we get sometimes, whether it's mental or physical, having a coach like yourself, you teach many people how to be more flowy, having a birth coach to, you know, maybe switch the position of the woman who is laboring, switch the energy that might be stagnant or like hard, you know, softening the space, softening the lights, softening the voices, um, you know, the energy is kind of be in such a way that it's like, everything's going to be okay. Just breathe, take it easy. Um, but I know that births aren't made to look like that, whether it's on Hollywood or like, you know, stories played. So listening to other people's birthing story. And if one has a positive birth story, share it. Mm -hmm. Share it as much as you can and let people know that it is possible. Even if you had a birth at home till nine centimeters and you had to go home. That's still incredible. You were able to harness and do what you wanted with a little bit of shifts. You know, you were, um, it must've been very challenging and difficult, but you did it. And you have a beautiful little boy. He is so cute, God bless him. <laughs> and uh, so there's always that beautiful and um, divine purpose. It's, it's a it's a feminine flow it's it's so I just I love I love the feminine energy it's so wonderful I feel sometimes birth has become so medical and so hard and like so sterile that it's it almost strips the the femininity away because you know, women are made to believe to get you know medically induced just book the c-section just just get it out just just finish it and that's okay for someone who wants that. In my philosophy and like my core value, the feminine energy is so intense, so beautiful and passionate that it's so multi-level. There's so much to it. I, I like, yeah. And yeah, when you talk about the feminine energy and like the birthing process, I agree with you wholeheartedly where of course every woman's decision of how they want to do their birth is their own and there is no judgment, shame around whatever option you choose. 
Absolutely. Something that could be interesting to consider and reflect on is this idea that, you know, with this rush in our culture and this mm. push of helping us kind of get over with the birth, you know, mm. so much of, aside from just the birthing process, not to mention our female cultural generational conditioning mm. of like a wrongness with being women and the sullied part, right? We were sullied when we had our period. Um, you know, that was something that was shameful. And so for many, many years and decades and generations, that part of us was deemed as bad and it cuts us off. It's that's like generational trauma of like cutting us off from our womb energy, you know, the the part of us that is responsible for creation, not just of human beings, but creating art, mm -hmm. creating life, whatever you want to create in your life, it really, we need to connect to, you know, that energy. And when we've been told that it's wrong and bad, we cut it off. And then when we have this experience of being able to create and we're pushed and we're forced into, you know, just the, the medical system and the conventional, whatever they want, you know, we're not really able to really tap into and develop that healthy relationship, like with our feminine you know, and, and ultimately it can cause resentment even, right? Because say we get pushed too quickly and then it leads us to a C-section and then we have a scar that we start hating our bodies for. Mm -hmm. And then we're always reminded when we look at our child that they created that scar. So now mm -hmm. we have resentment toward the child. Now this can get dark. Yeah. But this is the reality of what can happen. You know, so, and that's why I think what you said earlier, like accepting your birth story is really important so that there, that doesn't, that dynamic doesn't happen. But that's like the reality of the traumas that are happening, especially when we, you know, stick to that conventional path of, um, you know, what most people are doing today if they don't have doulas or if they're not doing home births or anything like that. Again, there's no judgment if you decide to yeah. do that. Okay. Just know that that is part of our medical culture. And I don't need to like beat a dead horse. Everybody knows yeah. that when you go to the doctors, you're rushed in, you're rushed out. It's just part of the, the medical system. So, um, yeah. one of the things I really had to navigate repeatedly, like one of the things that you had mentioned, that's really important, especially for healing and, and developing a, a positive relationship with birth and that area of our body, like our womb and our sacral yeah. is being heard and being seen. And luckily I was, I was heard and seen with my birth coach. However, when I went to the hospital for that last little bit, it was so clear to me how I was not heard and seen. Like repeatedly, they kept asking me to get the, the medication. They kept asking me, um, you know, if, if this doesn't happen soon, like you need a C-section. And I was like, literally get the fuck away from me. Like, nice. <laughs> that's what I said. I was like, Cause I was like, I am 30 years old. I don't need a fucking C-section. Yeah. Like, I'm healthy. I haven't had one issue with this pregnancy. The baby is coming. My body is just stressed out. You guys are ridiculous. And, and they were like, well, if she doesn't come or if he doesn't come soon or whatever, like, I'm like, you guys need to stop. Like I literally just told my husband and my husband was getting upset with them. And he was like, you guys need to leave. Like you literally don't know what you're doing. Like, <laughs> you know, it was really frustrating because I'm in the moment of giving goddamn birth <laughs> and I'm like, can you not bombard me with these questions when I clearly said no 10 times, if you could really respect what I'm saying, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Goodbye. And that was the, a big part of the hesitation that I had of even doing that in the beginning. That's why I was so adamant about wanting it at home. So I was like, I do not want any influence or for interruption. Anything. Yeah. And, you know, I had that experience to just be like, this is crazy because unfortunately not all women can stand strong in that, right? They can just collapse under that pressure because it was a lot of pressure in a vulnerable moment. But that just, again, helps me resonate with those women who are in an experience like that and yes. they end up, I don't want to say collapsing, but almost like giving into mm. that because there is that pressure and they don't maybe know what to do. They don't know how to trust themselves. And so they just succumb to that. And then there's a snowball of effect that. Oh, happens yes. That, you oh, know, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's this gives me so much goosebumps. <laughs> this is like. And so, like you said, that is part of my journey, perhaps for that reason. Yes, darling. Oh, big time. 
big time. I feel it. I feel it like in my bones. <laughs> I do. I felt that in my bones. And just bless you. Bless you so much. God bless you. And like there's there's so much wisdom in what you went through. And you're not quiet about it, which is which is beautiful. You're expressing, you're you're expressing your experience and I feel speechless at the moment. I just want to like absorb what you just said. And I'll I'll pause there for a moment to just offer the same invitation because not that I had that planned whatsoever, but yeah, it's beautiful. You know, I feel it too. You know, I felt I felt as I was sharing it, the passion behind it. Um, because, you know, as we said, we're kind of on the same page in the sense of like female empowerment. And that's such an important aspect of everything that I do, everything that Amanda does. And it's sharing stories like this that I think really helps bridge the gap from just the concepts of empowerment. Yes. Like yes. how we're applying, how do we apply empowered action in our life? How do we Sorry, start to stand could, I, could I could I add to this for a moment? It's yeah. There's this empowerment, and then there's jujitsu, which I love th this word, these words, jujitsu, if I'm not mistaken, means gentle art. Mm -hmm. The gentle part of this word is something that's so, so big. It's so resonating. It's You see the transformation from white to black, the the philosophy is gentle yeah and and birth too can be and my wishes for others is that it's empowered and gentle not like let's get to her you like it's yeah. it's so tense everything is so intense no there can be passion but it doesn't have to be so intense like flow with it and like protect your space have self-protection like you know protecting your vibe um self-awareness like do, just do a little bit of, of um, self-education. I'm not saying you have to become a, you know, a, an expert at birth, but give yourself, there's so much free information online these days. There's so many incredible doulas out there just sharing free information. Empower yourself with information. Empower yourself with just even watching. You know, if you don't want to read, don't read. Just watch. Watch the body language on videos. Watch the body language of different um women who have birth and absorb it so that you also can go on and then there'll be less traumatic or traumatized people and less you know traumatized uh babies but what's so wonderful is that we can all uh, release trauma there are ways to kind of reset so if we have gone through trauma there are practical ways to say, you know what, I'm gonna release and let go and be whole again. Okay, I might have gone through a, a messed up situation. I might have gone through a horrific experience, but kind of circling it back to how my parents raised me, that you might go through war, quite literally. Yeah. Whether it's a physical war or like a mental war or like a relationship war, but that's where the real warrior comes from, that peaceful, like empowered warrior. You don't just have peace out of nothing. No, you have to go through shit to like have peace. Yeah. That's that's the true, like just like a black belt. You didn't just come, like you went through hell and back probably mm -hmm. to, to be this graceful, gentle monster, basically. You just <laughs> took from that. That's it. No, I, say that with love. I say that with love. That. You know, mm -hmm. so. This, there's, this is so, this is so big. So thank you so much for um, inviting me um, all around the world. We're, we're all over, but we're yeah. connected via Zoom. So thanks to Zoom and podcast worlds. <laughs> Absolutely. And lastly, um, to wrap up a beautiful, fruitful conversation, where can people connect with you? Whether they want to learn more about the doula stuff or your yogi lifestyle, or just connect with you just as a human on... Yeah you know, just a human being. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, I love social media, um, Instagram. So holy.women.wellness on Instagram. 
Um, I'm still pretty uh, dinosaur when it comes to social media. That's like the only platform I have. <laughs> I don't have TikTok or uh, what Twitter. I don't have everything else or Facebook. Um, I probably should get back to that, but I like to keep it very simple. Um, I try to like not stress myself out too much with too many accounts, but I realize that um, yeah, in order to grow bigger, you have to like touch more uh, uh, social media sites. But at this present moment, I like to keep it keep it simple. So Instagram um, is where you can probably find me. If you're ever in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, that's where my um, studio is. And uh, welcome to come to the UAE. It's it's a it's a wonderful place. Abu Dhabi is awesome. I now I have a that. reason. Yes, absolutely. I, have a reason. <laughs> I cannot wait till you come. There is a um, competition in November. I think it's a World Pro in Abu Dhabi, oh. and. Last November, I um, watched my classmates uh, compete and they said, Amanda, why don't you compete? I don't know if I'm ready. You know, I didn't really get the green light yet from, from my coach or maybe he's, he's kind of like, he's kind of like, you know, very cool, calm, collected. So I can't really read some yeah. of his, uh, his uh, expressions. I was like, I don't know if I'm ready. But this November, I'd love to try to compete. I think I need to say it more clearly. I'd like to compete in November in yes. the white belt uh, division. Just 100 you're two years plus in by yeah. November, there's even more months you are you are ready you are I'm ready I'll be ready I'll be ready just yes. gotta do it just gotta do it so I'm excited for that I hope to bring the grace and the empowerment of all the lessons learned and just show up and just try it. you know just do it just do it whatever comes whatever right. happens. literally no strings attached there is no pressure and with that said last thing I'd like to share with jiu-jitsu practitioners is um what is if you do takedowns um yeah. What is your favorite takedown or submission and or submission at the moment? I know they're ever evolving, but at the moment, yes. I like it. Um, so it's so funny that you say that because yesterday I went to go train in New York City at Enzo Gracie's gym, and it's amazing. But I was training with someone, um, I won't say the belt color, but she was a woman also. She was so amazing. I really enjoyed rolling with her the first time, but I don't think she expected me to do a takedown. I mean, she took my back afterwards because I don't know what the heck I was doing. Because when I did the takedown, I was like, oh, shit, I just did that. And she was like, you know, <laughs> she wasn't expecting it. She was like, oh, my goodness. Um, I wish I knew the name of the takedown, but where you grab the arm and the lapel and you just trip, trip them with your left leg. I mean, I'm still, my terminology is not well. But almost like a um, like foot speed. Maybe. Yeah, that's what it was. And I took her down, but then she, of course, took my back, which was so humbling. It was so much fun. And that's um, a fun yeah it was awesome. submission thank you thank you uh, submission um i like uh bow and arrow i love to do a okay. bow and arrow i love that that's so much fun <laughs> fine love it when so, i can get it <laughs> when i can get it yes <laughs> amazing uh, well, thank you so much for Amanda for being on the podcast. And um, it was just such a beautiful conversation. I hope that many, there's a lot of different gold nuggets and pieces of value and just sharing our experiences. Um, mm -hmm. I think help others again, feel seen and heard and just relate a little bit and not feel so alone in that process. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think it's cool to kind of bridge that gap a little bit of see where jujitsu can influence, not just being a better doula, because what you're really speaking to on a broader scale is how just potent jujitsu is when we can really absorb the, the philosophies of jujitsu, how it really can impact our other aspects of our life, Absolutely. that it's all interconnected, the way that we um, show up to jujitsu and navigate the journey of jujitsu is going to reflect in all these other areas. And so being open-minded is one of the big skills because otherwise you know that's what's really going to support you and being able to translate those things and so thank you so much again for sharing i'll make sure that all of your contact info is in the show notes and i hope listeners if you took anything away please feel free to tag her on social media tag us at body by boss llc and we'd love to hear any takeaways that you had and other than that thank you so much amanda and i hope that you enjoy the rest of your day I did. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure and it was so, so fulfilling. There was so much content and um, thanks for having me.